Some snakes are undeniably the most beautiful creatures on the entire planet. But which are the five most beautiful that also make great pets? Today we're going to find out. I'm Adam, you're watching Wicked's Wicked Reptiles, stick around. Now before I start, this is a subjective thing, so what's beautiful to me might not be beautiful to you, and what's beautiful to you might not be the most beautiful to me. So this is just an overall what is beautiful, what do I think make the top five. And there are some rules to this. I'm only picking normal morphs, so no designer morphs, just classic. Now this is an albino ball python, so although I think Pikachu might be the most handsome boy that there ever was, he's discluded because he's not normal. Rule number two, non-venomous. So I am talking about snakes that could make good pets, and I don't think venomous snakes make very good pets for 99% of people. So with that, let's go. Number five, Bismarck ringed python. What the heck is that? Well, that's what I thought three weeks ago when I found out what this was. A Bismarck ringed python is a python that's found on an archipelago. So a group of islands, the Bismarck Archipelago, which is off of the coast of New Guinea. And like another snake that might be coming up in this list, they look different as babies uh, compared to when they're adults. When they're babies, they're gonna have bright red or bright orange bands or stripes on them. There's two different types of Bismarck ringed pythons. Well, the coloration anyway. And these are normals, these are not morphs. So when they're babies, they're gonna look more like this or like this. Uh, but as they're adults, they brown out a bit and they look more like this. But what makes them so beautiful as adults, even though they lose that vibrant color they have when they're babies, they are iridescent, very iridescent, very similar to say like a Bolin's python, which doesn't really have an amazing color. They're kind of drab looking if you look at them without great lighting from a picture. But you get them under the sun and it's a completely different animal. They look completely different. I think Bolin's pythons, although they're not going to be on the list, are some of the most beautiful because of the iridescence and Bismarck ring pythons have that same sort of thing. And the reason they're on the list, eh, between four and seven feet, somewhere around there. Not super popular in the pet trade right now, or the hobby, I should say, but uh, it seems like they're more and more common in terms of people who are breeding them in captivity rather than buying wild-caught specimens. And because they only get to seven feet, they don't need a giant enclosure. So that's number five. Number four, Asian vine snakes. Yeah, okay, so they don't make the best pets, but we are talking about display animals as well, and animals that aren't going to kill you if they do bite you. Although, Asian vine snakes probably do want to bite you. Asian vine snakes come from Asia, Southern Asia. This is an arboreal species. They're, they've got this really weird thing going on with their eye. Instead of up and down the slit for the pupil, it's like side to side with like a little, I don't know, check mark kind of thing going on. So they do look very different and very unique in comparison to a lot of other species. And vine snakes look kind of like vines. I mean, they do look very slender. They're not a medium bodied snake in any means whatsoever. Like say Pikachu, I would consider this a medium bodied snake. I can't quite fit my hand around Pikachu. An Asian vine snake, I mean, if you put both your fingers together, they would touch basically with the snake in the middle. They're very thin. They don't get that big and you're gonna need an arboreal enclosure, but why they're not so close to number one on the list, very simple. They don't really eat rodents, or it's tough to get them to eat rodents. They eat things like toads or lizards actually is way more common. They'll eat things like geckos or anoles, and that is a little bit more expensive and harder to find in a lot of places. And although this isn't a just about Asian vine snakes video, they do this really cool thing with their tongue where they keep, instead of like flicking it like a normal snake, would just kind of flick it and stick it back in their yap right away. They'll do this thing where they stick their tongue out and then just kind of like leave it out. Scientists think that they're trying to mimic Shakira during the halftime show of the Super Bowl, but I don't know if that's true or not. And an interesting thing about Asian vine snakes, rear fang venomous. Now, I didn't add them in the list, but I did a list about five really cool rear fang venomous snakes, and these are the same sort of thing. You're not gonna die if they bite you, but you might get a fever or some swelling, something like that. They're not gonna kill you, but I mean, probably shouldn't get bit by one. Two down, three to go, and we're about to get into some really beautiful snakes. If you like the video so far, consider hitting subscribe. I'd appreciate that. And on with it to number three. Number three, Brazilian rainbow boas. Yeah, I can't do this list without having a Brazilian rainbow boa. That would be just silly. 
These guys, all rainbow boas are awesome, but Brazilians have the craziest coloration without the iridescence factor, right? So if you exclude the fact that the iridescence is amazing, just the coloration of these snakes is far and beyond most other snakes that aren't venomous. I mean, I'll be honest, I could probably pick five venomous snakes that are more beautiful than anything on this list, but these are pets that could be good for you. And in terms of what makes a good pet, I think rainbow boas, if you can figure out how to keep the humidity up, which is what they're gonna need, are a great snake. I mean, they're gonna get to maybe six feet, gigantic ones, maybe seven, but this is very uncommon. So you can keep them in a four by two by one PVC their entire life if you want. They're generally very good eaters. Uh, they're a little bit nippy as babies, but they can kind of grow out of it if you are tolerating getting bit when they're babies. They will grow up and, and be a, a snake kind of like Pikachu where you don't really have to worry about it. Knock on wood, Pikachu, don't, don't bite me. Don't make a fool out of me, Pikachu. And that iridescence thing that I talk about probably a lot during this video, if you take them out under a certain light or under the sun, even better, they kind of look, have this rainbow thing going on, which is why they're called rainbow boas, by the way. These guys come from South America, so the humidity has got to be quite up there. Not that all South American species need high humidity, but these guys do. And then the heat uh, isn't super crazy, right? So this isn't a care guide, but it's not crazy like, say, Euromastix would be or something like that. So it's really easy, as long as you can maintain the humidity, these guys will thrive for you, and they're great eaters. I think I mentioned that before, so you don't have to worry about that like you would with, say, Pikachu, who just came off a five-month hunger strike, so appreciate that. Number two, tricolor colubrids. So, I mean, this isn't one species. I was gonna pick milk snakes, but there's others as well. Scarlet king snakes are absolutely mind-blowing, in my opinion. Tricolor hognose snakes are another great example, and if you've watched more than one and a half videos on this channel, you know I love hognose snakes. So really, there's a bunch of different ones. There's a several king snake species and milk snake species that have this tricolor banding that look very similar to coral snakes. And coral snakes, although amazing and beautiful, not great pets because if you get bit by one, you're gonna have a rough week. And although this is natural snakes or not morph snakes, there's a bunch of different morphs that you can get with milk snakes, uh, for example, uh, or even king snakes that have the tricolor patterning. So you kind of really can't get bored. Even if for some reason you could get bored with like say a Pueblin milk snake, like my girl Beatrice here, I don't know how you could, but if you could, she's an apricot version. And then there's also uh, tangerine versions and there's albino versions. And same with Hondurans, by the way, which probably are the most beautiful, in my opinion, of all of the milk snakes. And milk snakes, kink snakes, hognose snakes, whatever ones I'm forgetting. In general, I mean, there might be uh, outliers and exceptions. Don't get huge. So up to five feet, usually something like that. Hognose snakes, even smaller than that most of the time. Well, all the time, really. The tricolor version, anyway. So they're easy to care for. I don't know of any that have crazy heat or humidity requirements or need tons and tons of space, and most of them thrive well in captivity. So if you want something that looks like it could be dangerous, you know, then get yourself a milk snake because it kind of looks like a coral snake. And number one, emerald tree boas. It was really hard to pick between emerald tree boa and green tree pythons. I mean, I, realistically, although they are different, one's a python and one's a boa, they do look kind of similar, right? There's a lot of differences, don't get me wrong. The reason I chose emerald tree boa is because I like to show animals in the video, and although I don't have one, I have a tattoo of one. So, I mean, I don't know. I've always thought they were cool, even since, I don't know, 10 years ago or whenever I got this tattoo. They come from South America, they give live birth, they spend most of their life in the trees, and their teeth look like this, so don't, don't get bit by one. I mean, this is a display animal. Most of the time, they are not great as a handling pet, and yes, there are two different versions, right? Or two different uh, subspecies, if you want to call them that, of emerald tree boas. The northern version are smaller and much more common, and then the Amazon basin version are larger, they can get up to nine feet, have a different kind of patterning and a little bit different coloration. They're a little bit easier to tame down, but they're a lot harder to find and a lot more expensive if you can find them. And like the Bismarck ring python, they change colors as they get older. When they're babies, they're gonna be higher in the trees, they're gonna be next to things like flowers and fruit, so they gotta blend in with that. So they're gonna be yellow, or maybe they'll be red, or maybe they'll be orange, but as they get older, almost always, although, <sighs> Pikachu, although they're trying to breed a version where they stay yellow, most of the time, especially natural, which is what we're talking about, wild type, 
They turn mostly green with some white down their back. The more common one, the Northerns, they get to about six feet, so they don't need a ton of room. A three by two by two is what I found mostly on the internet. Again, I'm not an expert, and this is not a care guide, but that's what I found mostly on the internet uh, when, when it comes to enclosure size. And you want it to be humid, too. They do like it a little bit more humid. Not crazy hot, but warmer. Uh, being that they're from South America, they're a tropical species. And with most arboreal snakes, this is not always, but as a, you know, kind of general rule, not the most friendly. I mean, they can be, but I've never really known anyone to say, yeah, I love handling my emerald tree boa. It's just a pleasure. Not really. And they do eat tons and tons of prey, but because they do eat in the air, like they literally are above the ground when they eat most of the time, they've got these giant teeth. In general, these are great display animals. There's very little that looks as beautiful as say a misted enclosure, even a fogged up enclosure that's naturally planted if you want, or just has a lot of great decor with a beautiful emerald tree boa kind of nestled in the middle of the, the enclosure on like a piece of dowel or something like that. They're gonna look like these little, I don't wanna say it, but kind of like poop rings, you know? They're gonna coil up above the ground. They're beautiful and, and that's number one. And there you go. That, in my opinion, the five most beautiful snakes that also make good pets. What do you think? Did I mess something up? Do you think that there's something that I forgot that I, I should have put in there? I know there's things like San Francisco garter snakes and things like that that aren't venomous, but there's not really a lot of those. Put it in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you. Smash subscribe if you haven't already. And what should I talk about next week? I took this video idea out of the comment section from two weeks ago. Your idea could be next. And because I do videos twice a week, that means I'll see you on Thursday.